بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم okay so the next thing we'll try to understand the difference like uh, if you're managing with the traditional networks how it's going to be already we have covered majority of the things we'll quickly overview and with the help of controllers how we are going to do networking or how it's going to be different when you compare with your traditional networks so first we'll try to see the traditional networks overview and then then we'll also see controller based networking how it is going to differ now again when it comes to managing a traditional networks we do box by box management as i already said you need to go to each and every box go to the command line of each and every box whether telnet or ssh and you will be doing box by box management whether you want to make any changes or whether you want to do some kind of troubleshooting so most of the time you'll be using telnet ssh if if your device supports graphical you will you still use http for graphical interface and most of the monitoring will be done with the help of snmp again okay so that is one thing and if if there is any device device generally starts with no or the minimum configurations now this means whenever you want to add any new device probably that device either do not have any configurations or or just a minimum configurations and it will be very difficult uh, probably you know you need to go and add a lot of complex configurations as per your company requirements either via command line or via gui options and apart from that uh, the most of the traditional networks they do support a feature called uh, asic now probably like if you take an example of your switches switches do most of the forwarding inside the hardware that is your uh, asic chip now with this uh, chip so it's a kind of uh, chip which will provide you most of the forwarding done in the hardware to for faster switching like referring the mac tables or ip lookup these other things so generally the actual forwarding of your packets done inside your hardware which makes uh, which makes the switching of your packets much faster like application specific integrated circuit chip now again if if there is something uh, specifically on the hardware now this 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 is something uh, what most of the devices supports the hardware based forwarding to switch your packets more faster and one more thing with the traditional networks you have multiple uh, separate separate servers for network management like like maybe you have some kind of snmp snmp let's say i have an snmp server which is mainly doing the monitoring of your network providing the statistics of your network at one centralized location and maybe you have a separate dhcp server offering the dhcp uh, dhcp like assigning the ip addresses and then you have a separate server for cisco eyes which is for authentication most of the authentication for your network or network access or device access authentication authorization and accounting so these things or security policies will be configured from cisco i server again you have a separate firewall if you're using some uh, firepower firewall maybe you're managing this with a different console so so there are different products you will have or different servers you'll be running in your company network and to manage each and every server you need to log in them separately like the way you log in into snmp you will have some snmp software uh, management console and you open up that to manage that and then for firepower again you go and maybe there is a, there are different options you type in the ip address of the individual devices to log into this product so so all these servers has to be managed separately and there are separate consoles for each and every server means there is no centralized console here so with the help of sdm we'll be doing that and also now these are some of the limitations we can say with the traditional networks now when you compare with the traditional networks if i'm if i'm going with sdn controllers what are the benefits or what what will be what will differ when it comes with sdn controllers here so with with the help of sdn controllers i can do something called dynamic implementation of initial configurations if you remember whenever you want to add a new box 
I can I can configure this box instead of going with going to this box uh, manually going and typing the command line on each and every box which will take a lot of time I can provision uh, I can do something called uh, initial provisioning we call it as plug and play initial provisioning where this particular box can get the initial configurations I can push the configurations from a remote remote controller from a remote controller okay so the only thing this device need to know is it should know how to reach the controller and from the controller I can push the configurations or I can and, and this device can obtain the complete initial configurations so that it can be it can become a part of the network and start forwarding the traffic so this is going to reduce the time especially when you are trying to add any new devices this is one one major difference so you don't need to go to individual device you can do some kind of automatic provisioning the same thing what I discussed automate the deployment of your new devices or the, the end devices will get the initial configurations automatically and this is going to reduce the time as well now other things what you can do is dynamic and the automatic update of the changes so the other thing as I said we can we can automate the changes of the configurations based on the pre-configured policies now let's take a network now let's take an example here we, we do have a pre-existing network which is being built and it is working fine and maybe after one month you you came up with a requirement so there are a few changes in the requirements and according to that requirement you need to make some changes to your network or uh, you may want to add some kind of maybe you have some new users added to the network or maybe you have multiple redundant paths added or maybe you have some new applications added into your network and according to that re application requirement we want to change few things okay so now according to these changes I want my network to behave a little bit different maybe I want to do some kind of forwarding from a new path or maybe I want to deny specific I want to write some kind of security policies to deny a specific traffic okay so which is going to be a little bit different from what is already configured so if you want to make any changes normally you have to go to individual device again you have to make some changes let's say I have implemented some quality of service policy or maybe an ACL I have configured and your requirement changes you need to go to those individual devices log into the command line or GUI whatever the option you have and then modify the existing policies and these are all you have to do manually in general but with SDN it's going to be different now with SDN so if I'm if I'm managing my network with the help of SDN based now the router or the switch whatever the device so it is going to automatically uh, get the instructions so from the SDN we are going to SDN controller we are going to send out the instructions to this device and this device are going to automatically uh, make changes as per the uh, instructions like SDN controller is going to tell that okay I want my network to behave something like this so this is what my requirement so the SDN is going to share its requirement according to that the networking devices can either either go and change the existing policies as per the requirements so all can be done automatically all by itself now th this can be anything like maybe you can take some examples like uh, maybe uh, there is a new re application requirement I want to add a new ACL statement to that I want to deny specific traffic that's a requirement so the networking devices may end up adding some specific ACLs or maybe the bandwidth requirement I do have this bandwidth requirement and maybe this particular path is not having that much of bandwidth so it can change the route or change the routing table or change the quality of service policies uh, or or use a temporary route or alternate route something like that or maybe whenever any new users are added I want to re-authenticate maybe I want to do some authentication and that has to be done uh, by the devices so these all things can be can be automated so without manual process without going to each end with device this can be automated here 
Now, next thing, uh, there, is, there is one more thing uh, we'll be doing with SGN controller is the relocation of your control plane. Now, relocation of the control plane means normally the routers, they, they calculate the best route based on some kind of routing table. They build the routing table based on some OSPF protocol or if you take a switch, it's going to build the MAC table uh, generally based on the MAC addresses that it's going to learn. So this is this is typically the job of a control plane. So like brain of your devices. And based on this, they will be deciding how to forward and where to forward the traffic. Now with the help of SGN controllers, so basically these devices will be doing the data plane job, nothing but they do the forwarding, but the actual decisions will be done by the controller. So the decision or figuring out how many paths are there, uh, what is the requirement, what is the best route or which device will use which route. These kind of things can be can be done by the controller. So, so with the SGN controllers, we are actually relocating the control plane logic or the control plane functionality to the controller, uh, which may or may not reside on the networking devices. Apart from that, there is one more thing. Finally, we have something like one centralized uh, management in one box. Now with the help of uh, SGN controllers, now let's say we got an SGN controller here. Now this SGN controller will be using some kind of software like we'll be using something like Cisco DNA, we'll be using with Cisco. And with the help of this, we still have different devices like we still have DSCP, we still have the Cisco eyes for security, you still have WSA for maybe web security, you still have a firepower device for maybe for, for doing the firewall job and you still have the routers and the switches, all the devices here. But in order to manage all these devices, so you don't need to log into each and every device. So these all can be managed from a single uh, centralized uh, point. Now, now that is something what uh, we can say. So Cisco call this as a single pane of glass. That's what single pane of glass where you don't need to log into each and every device because normally as if you want to manage your Cisco, any product, any device, you need to log into that particular device separately. So now I can log in or I can manage all these devices or send the instructions from a single uh, box. And that's what we call a single uh, pane of glass where you can have multiple management services in integrated into one single box. And that is your SDN controller. So from here we can control uh, all the devices from one single so centralized software.